What happens in the sky affects life down here on Earth. The celestial compass shows you how and guides your way with astrology you can use from professional astrologer Kathy Beal. Every episode features her light-hearted practical forecasts and navigational tips, blended with humor, optimism, and a love of patterns, symbolism, and pop culture references. Kathy translates technicalities into concepts that apply to real life. You'll learn how the current moment ties to where we've been from the recent past to cycles that last happened years ago, and get a look at where we're heading. And much more, from special topics to special guests. The Celestial Compass, enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Here's your host, Kathy Beal. Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to Celestial Compass. I'm Kathy Beal of, Astro of uh, well, that's a good start, empowermentunlimited.net, and we're going to talk about the astrology of events in the, and people in the news. But first, a little bit of a heads up or an update of what's coming in March 2023. You can read the full forecast at omtimes.com, that's O-M-T-I-M-E-S, and also my site, empowermentunlimited.net. This is the month where everything changes. This is the month where a lot of things start happening. Almost every major body in the sky changes signs, which means lots of shifts in energy and a lot of that energy is going to be extremely motivating for a variety of reasons before we even get to the spring equinox or the fall if you're listening to this in the southern hemisphere which is on march 20th this year the first big shift that's going to affect everybody is the wrapping up and the starting over of a 28 and a half to 30 year cycle, Saturn moves into Pisces on March 7th for the first time since the mid 90s. And this brings new lessons, new tasks, new obligations, new structure to a lot of formless things. It's like putting a box on the ocean, I've been saying to people. And um, we'll have lessons in how we're all interconnected. There may be some accountability, maybe not. Um, adulting influences wanting us to notice what we're doing to other people, how they affect us, energy sloshing back and forth. I would expect water, the oceans, religion, pharmaceuticals, uh, parts of society that are underprivileged or victimized to be very much in the center of what we're experiencing and reconsidering. And after the equinox, the big event that everybody on the internet has been talking about astrologically, Pluto shifts into Aquarius for the first time since the late 1700s. Last time it was there brought major shifts in power between the established order and the masses. The French Revolution coincided with that, but also the writing of the U.S. Constitution. If you go back through history, uh, many other shifts in power in the guiding structure of the time, which was in many of these cycles, one form or another of organized religion. So, very activating month. This is a month when all the planets are direct. You'll find yourself motivated to get a lot going, and you may actually find yourself getting somewhere. Also, warning, Venus, goddess of indulgence and pleasure, is moving into Taurus later in the month. And, um, you know, chocolate just might be the answer to a lot of things. Uh, so, with that in mind, <laughs> I'm now ecstatic to welcome back Alex Miller to talk about the asteroid astrology underpinning what we've been seeing in the news. Alex was last here around the midterms and uh, had a very popular discussion that a lot of people gave me wonderful feedback. Um, to remind you, Alex is 
a professional writer and astrologer, author of The Black Hole Book, detailing deep space points in astrological interpretation, and the forthcoming Heaven on Earth, a comprehensive study of asteroids, both mythic, mythic and personal. Obviously, I need a new a new mouth today. Alex is a frequent contributor to the Mountain Astrologer, Daykeeper Journal, and uh, the National Council for Geocosmic Research's journals and e-news commentary. His work has also appeared in Aspects Magazine, Dell Horoscope, Planet Waves, Neptune Cafe, and Sastrology. He's a past president of the Philadelphia Astrological Society and a former board member of the Philadelphia chapter of NCGR. Hey, welcome back, Alex. Thanks, Kathy. Great to be with you again. I would like to start with a brief refresher. What are asteroids and what role do they play? Okay, so uh, I use I use a variety of minor points, uh, minor bodies, they're called in my work, not just the asteroids, but uh, asteroids is the is the is the main thrust of it. They are um, tiny bits of rock, mainly rock, uh, that orbit in a in a cluster uh, between uh, Mars and Jupiter. There are about there are estimated to be about 1.9 million such bodies in the solar system, and right now. They have uh, discovered and computed the orbits of about 500,000, but there's only about 29,000 that have names, and those are the ones we can work with. Until they have names, they don't really, we don't have a point of reference for them. But they add uh, incredible detail and uh, insight into birth charts, event charts, um, any kind of charts, really. Um, and uh, in addition to those, I work with centaurs, which are bodies that orbit, you know, in, in varying uh planes between um, like Jupiter and uh, Neptune, and then also trans Neptunian things out past Neptune's orbit, like such as Pluto and uh, some lesser known bodies that are also dwarf planets or not, but uh, uh, come into that same uh, realm of minor bodies that I find so fascinating and revealing. Well, thank you. I hope that puts a, a framework for people. Uh, the last time you and I talked, the U.S. Uh, midterms were very much in the news, and um, I'm thinking we, we're going to start with the 118th Congress and how we got uh, a Speaker of the House. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So, um, yeah, the 118th, <laughs> I think I caught your, I think I caught your tongue. The oh, no. 118th Congress <laughs> by, by constitutional fiat convenes on the 3rd of January uh, every, uh, every other year. And, um, this year, when we look at the chart, we're seeing signs of not such a smooth, pro uh, you know, process for the next couple of years, unfortunately, for the country. Um, so, just we'll talk first about a few basics about the chart itself, and then we'll talk about specifically about uh, Speaker McCarthy's struggle to attain that title. Um, so, the Sun um, on the day that the Congress convened uh, was in a T square which is a dynamic pattern where the sun is, uh, in this case, at, this, at the fulcrum, which is the midpoint, um, between two opposed bodies in the sky, and uh, therefore is squared to each, each of them. So on the one hand, the sun is reaching out towards asteroid America. That seems very appropriate for the day that the American Congress convenes. But on the other side, it's reaching out towards an asteroid called Knot, now, not is a, a general disqualifier, a symbol of lack of progress, inability to proceed, that kind of thing. Um, when it's tied up in a pattern like this, there are two ways to look at it. Um, just sun not itself says, whatever you're doing today, it's not going to pan out. There's not going to be a lot of, a lot of um, uh, fruits of your labors, so to speak. And with not also then opposed America, as well as the sun in square to America, the suggestion is that the country isn't really behind this Congress. They're not really backing them up. They're not, they're not supporting what their agenda is, whatever that may be. So that's the basic solar pattern for the day. Um, but in addition, there's a grand cross, which is four points that are roughly 90 degrees apart. And um, that's where McCarthy enters the picture. We'll talk about the other three points first, and then we'll, then we'll get to him. So Three of the points in this Grand Cross are Asteroid House, 
which of course would be a reference for the House of Representatives. That's the 24th Sagittarius. And it is squared to Neptune at 22 Pisces. And it's opposing uh, a TNO, um, yes, a TNO called Chaos. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> at 29 Gemini, which is traveling with an asteroid called Fanatica at 20 Gemini. Well, there now, we have, uh, that explains a lot right there. Yeah, doesn't it? That's, that says a lot about the state <laughs> in the house, at least, if not on the Senate side. Um, yeah, 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 this is, none of this is good. Uh, Neptune, you know, brings clouded judgment and, and inability to focus on, on, on true facts, deception, uh, purposeful fraud. Um, chaos is just what it sounds like. It's confusion, disorder, disarray. Um, fanatica is extremism. So we're seeing an image of the house tied up with fanatics who are, don't have a grasp on reality and are creating turmoil. And I think that's a fair estimate of what we're going to be seeing based on the, the few committee uh, meetings we've, we've witnessed so far. Um, but here's where things get very specific to, to Mr. McCarthy himself. By the way, I loved him in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I don't know if you've ever seen that film, but it's a, it's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful uh, metaphor for the way we are today as well. Now, obviously, that was a different Kevin McCarthy, a character actor from the 50s. But anyway... Uh, I digress. Now, so there's actually an asteroid McCarthy, which as, a, as an asteroid specialist, I always love to find those exact matches because the more, the more precise the correlation, the better the manifestation is how I usually phrase it. And um, asteroid McCarthy is doing two things on the day the Congress convenes. First, it's coming to its station. Now, we need to talk about what stations are. So, um, a station is a period at which a planet or any point uh, is it's pro progressing forward through the zodiac. It appears to slow its rate of motion and come to a standstill in reverse direction. Now, I say appears because this is an optical illusion created mm -hmm. by some complicated math that I don't understand, which <laughs> has said That's that any time... That's the best description that, of it I've heard yet. <laughs> <laughs> but basically what it means is any time you have any three bodies one of which is the Earth, one of which is the Sun, and any third body. There will come a time in our relative orbits where, from our perspective, the, that third point appears to have this activity. It's not actually happening astronomically, but astrologically, it, it's a very important point because what it represents is a, is a, a, a literal turning point, a major shift or change of some, of some nature, right? So, asteroid McCarthy coming to station at its station degree at the time the Congress convenes, shows McCarthy at a turning point in his life. This was obviously true. Either way, it panned out, right? If he went up in flames and didn't get the speakership, that would be the second time, second strike, he tried once before when Boehner left office and couldn't pull it together, and they gave it to Paul Ryan. So, and if he does attain his lifelong goal, obviously, of becoming speaker, then that's clearly a major turning point as well. So he's exactly where he wants to be on this day, really. The problem is he's not up there alone. <laughs> Just three doors down, he's at 20 Virgo. At 23 Virgo, we have an asteroid called Sisyphus. Ah. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the myth, Sisyphus is uh, uh, named for a, a mythic Greek denizen of Hades, their underworld. And for his crimes in life, Sisyphus was uh, sentenced to ha have to roll a large boulder up a hill which then rolls down again. So he has to go back down and retrieve the boulder and roll it up. And it rolls down again. And he rolls it up. And it rolls down again. And he does this forever. So astrologically, Sisyphus is an image of pointless effort, uh, inability to reach the goal, um, endless repetition. In, in a general sense, like maybe if you find it in a birth chart, it can, it can even refer to something like boredom or ennui. Like if you've got Sisyphus with Saturn, you might find your job boring. If you've got Sisyphus with Venus, your love life isn't so hot. Um, but in this case, you know, McCarthy became speaker, yes, but it was the first time in 100 years that the speaker wasn't chosen on the first ballot and the first time since the Civil War that it took as many ballots as his, which was 15 ballots till he finally got the job after li literally giving away the house um, to the fanatics in his caucus. So, right. I mean, even as much as agreeing to a provision where any single member at any time 
can call for uh, a motion to vacate, which is basically our version of a vote of no confidence. Anyone can stand up and say, hey, I don't like what this guy's doing. Should we still keep him the speaker or throw him out? So that's going to hamstring him just a bit, I would think, going forward. It hasn't happened yet, but it's only been two months. So give it time. Um, so that's basically where McCarthy found himself. And again, it's it's portrayed pretty emphatically right there in the chart for the Congress. And to follow up on this, just looking at the transits that are happening, Uranus, which was retrograde on Election Day, on the lunar eclipse that was November 8th, right. at the end of this month, for a period of about a week, Uranus returns to the degree that it occupied then, now uh -huh. direct. And when it does that, it's right on top of Jupiter in McCarthy's grand trine in Earth. Wow. And so that's got to start. That's got to be destabilizing. And at the same time, he's about to have his Saturn return. At the same uh -huh. time, his Saturn return is kicking in. And a Saturn return is when circumstances test what you've been doing with yourself. And um, you either get rewards for hard work and a job well done or repeatedly the cosmic two by four comes down on your hand and also starts <laughs> chopping away at the pylons in the foundation that you've built so um he's he's got a really rocky time coming up very soon sounds like yeah yeah and I also, the other thing I'll put in with this, I'm going to butt into what you're saying here, is the way the transits go, something that went one way at the midterms is now going to surprisingly blow up. Right. We'll see. We'll, well you see. know, they wouldn't have to lose a lot of seats through indictment or attrition, you know, mortality to, for the house to flip back again. So maybe that's, maybe that's going to start at this time. Um, before we lose I, or relieve yes. the house, let's let's just talk yes. briefly about one of its probably its most uh, famous new member, which would be oh, George yeah. Santos, if mm -hmm. that is his name, um, and uh, the the Republican congressman from New York who uh, uh, basically lied his way into Congress, uh, misrepresented ah. everything from his family history to his. His, his own uh, charitable affiliations and, and his work history, his educational background, everything basically was let's, falsified. And let's make this the first way, even though his constituents are agitating for it. Let's make this the it, first teaser. Let's make this the first teaser. And we'll, cut, we'll take our first break. And okay. hang on, everybody, and you'll find out what the asteroids have to say about this unusual individual. The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Want help with your own celestial compass? Visit my site, empowermentunlimited.net, for Astro Insight forecasts for each week, month, and new and full moon. Want to explore the personal impact? Make a decision? Understand another person? <laughs> 
It, it is possible. Click the Services tab to book a personal session with me. That address again, empowermentunlimited.net. You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's, who's not, not excited, excited for, for summer, summer break because she may not be having lunch again until September? Or a war veteran who's, who's having, having a hard, hard time, time landing, landing a job and getting back on his feet? I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I, I am, am hunger, hunger in, in America. America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Celestial Compass. We're talking with Alex Miller of Alex's Asteroid Astrology. And right before the break, we were getting the lead into looking at George Santos, the most currently most notorious in the news member of the U.S. House of Representatives. What you got for us, Alex? Uh, we just wanted to take a quick look and see if we could assess uh, George Santos's level of sincerity and honesty from the chart by <laughs> Asteroid. <laughs> Okay, and uh, I think I think we can make a fair stab at that. Uh, there is an asteroid called Li, um, and uh, in his case, that asteroid is in a T square. It is squared to asteroid George, and opposing asteroid Santos Sans, which is the closest. It's a hyphenated Santos Sans, which is the closest we have to Santos. Um, asteroid Li also conjoins asteroid House, and on the midpoint between. Lie and George, we have roughly semi square to each, we have the sun. So, yeah, he might not be completely forthcoming about all matters. Maybe that. not even about his name with that? This is possible, yes. <laughs> Although the fact that, that George and Santos Sanz fit so neatly into this, into this chart says either it is his name or he's just a damn good picker of, of you know, false, false, false names. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> I thought uh, maybe we'll take a break from politics, but I do have some Trump information coming at some point, I'm sure. Yeah, hang on, folks. It'll be coming, we'll, so you'll we'll, want to keep we'll, listening. We'll make you wait a little bit for that. We'll give you a tease. But let's talk about dead people. Yay! Um, <laughs> so you may have noticed a rather high amount of um, celebrity deaths in recent months. And uh, there's a good reason for this, celestially. Um, we've had um, what I call an extended aspect between two points that uh, explain that situation. Um, and extended aspects are, are aspects that, that are prolonged over what you would normally expect to see. This happens a lot amongst asteroids because they have such similar rates of, of, of uh, speed that once they once – they, connect with each other, they are locked into that resonance for considerable periods, sometimes weeks, months, even years, that they can maintain that, that stable aspect. In this case, it's actually between a planet and an asteroid, um, and it's, it's not a hugely long aspect, but it's much longer than would normally occur. I'm talking about Jupiter, which is the planet that rules celebrity and fame, uh, and currently it's, it's opposed to asteroid Osiris in the sky, which oh is named for the uh, Egyptian god of the dead. So you put the two together, and we're looking at celebrity deaths. Um, now, ordinarily, this would be a passage of you know, maybe a couple of weeks. I mean, Jupiter takes 12 years to circle the sun, and asteroids usually take between three and five. Most commonly, it's around four and change. So this asteroid is going to zip around the sun three times before Jupiter makes it once. And so it might just normally be a few weeks. But what happened was, as they moved into opposition to each other, we again had a station where Osiris was moving to its station and slowing. So because of this, they're actually opposing each other within orb uh, for almost four months, from like mid-November into just about now, mid-March, it'll, it'll phase out. But what was really impactful was during that time, at the end of 2022, the last two weeks of December, the sun walked into that pattern from the midpoint, creating a T-square in square to both Jupiter and Osiris. And the sun, of course, brings enhanced invisibility. It puts a spotlight, highlights things, bumps it mm -hmm. up a notch. So what happened at the end of 2022? Well, we had three internationally known figures pass three days apart. Um, we had um, Pele, the football phenom superstar of the 60s, 
uh, pass on the uh, 29th of December. And then Barbara Walters, the acknowledged doyen of female broadcast journalism, passed on the 30th. And Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI passed on the 31st. And um, I just wanted to take a quick look at how all of these uh, individuals factored, uh, how their deaths factored into the skies on the days that they passed. Um, so Barbara Walters um, had, a, had a very interesting uh, chart, actually, um, for, for, her, for her chosen profession. Um, she had a, a, a conjunction of Neptune, which rules television, which was her, her main medium of expression in journalism, though she did other forms. Um, uh, and, it was con she, and it was conjunct uh, asteroid Barbara and asteroid Walter. There is no Walter with an S, but there is a Walter, which is close enough for celestial jazz. Mm -hmm. um, so that, 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 that shows a definite, it wouldn't have had, necessarily had to have been news, but it shows a definite uh, movement towards television for her. Uh, that's, that's where she felt at home. And then uh, the moon, which is females generally, was in a tr an exact trine with Mercury, which would rule journalism. And uh, Mercury is opposing Saturn, which is career. So we've got that link there showing her as a female journalist in, in her profession. Um, another interesting sidebar here. Uh, she was, of course, famous for making her uh, interviewees cry. She was well-known, even lampooned, like on SNL and stuff for that. Well, there's an asteroid called Lacrimosa, which is oh, related wonderful. to the Latin for tears. And it conjoins Pluto, which is bringing up that deep well, you know, tapping into the, the roots of the situation, right? And those are squared Mercury, which is, you know, her interviewing style. So I think we can kind of chalk that up to that. But on the day she died, which was, again, the 30th of December, um, asteroid Walter was exactly conjunct Pluto, which is the modern ruler of death. And within orb of that conjunction were... Um, uh, Venus and Mercury, which again establishes her as a female news person, news personality, and also asteroid Manhattan. And she died in her home in New York City. Um, that transiting Osiris Jupiter square impacted her directly uh, because her natal son uh, was at the. Uh, 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 Excuse me. Um, conjunct. Um, uh, what am I talking about? Yeah, I conjunct the Anubis, or the uh, rather the Osiris end of that polarity. So she was walking directly into that um, at the time that she passed. Uh, the tidiness of this is just jaw dropping, isn't it? It is. It really is. Um, I kind of took these out of order. I meant to do Pele first because he passed first. So we'll, we'll backtrack All right. and deal with them. Um, so Pele is actually a nickname, and he says he doesn't know exactly where it came from, um, but there was an asteroid that was actually named for him. Uh -huh. And uh, again, we have, a, we have a fortuitous placement, which is in his birth chart, the asteroid Pele conjoins Mercury, which rules the naming function. So even though he wasn't given that name at birth, it became his name. It's uh, also things that fly through the life. air. Before, before, I'm sorry? And then Mercury is also ruling things that fly through the air, like a ball. Right. Right, right. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you, then I had to say it. No, that's fine. No, so his given name was, was Edison, named after the inventor. His parents later dropped the I for some reason. That's unclear, and he became Edson, but he was named for the inventor. And there is an asteroid named for that inventor, which is asteroid Edisona, with an A at the end. Um, and Edisona, in his birth chart, is exactly opposed an exact Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. So Edson there is showing a, a hugely uh, famous career, right? Uh, that, was, that was the name that tapped him into that capacity or that, that innate potential to have a career that was globally acknowledged with that Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. And again, when Pele passed, his uh, eponymous asteroid Pele was exactly squared to asteroid Atropos, which is named for the mythic Greek fate who severs the threat of life at death. Right. Uh, in addition, asteroid Edisona was at a station again um, and conjunct his natal ascendant. And Time transit Pluto, 
you're right, major change indeed. <laughs> and transit Pluto was exactly squared to his natal sun at the time. So again, we've got that connection between death and the essence of the individual. Um, pope what you got on the Pope? What? What you got on the Pope? Oh, what I got? I'm sorry, I'm having a little <laughs> delay here. Um, yeah, so he, he was he was a very interesting character to say the least. Um, and you know his his whole life story is written in asteroids in the birth chart. It's quite phenomenal. Um, for one thing, uh, obviously his his name wasn't Benedict. They take popes take uh, a different name, a regnal name when they when they are elected to the office. He was born as Joseph Ratzinger, but asteroid Benedict's, which is the closest to Benedict, um, is that station in his birth chart, and it's conjunct his midheaven. Uh, and asteroid bishop. Now, as pope, he is also bishop of Rome. So it shows the connection, you know, to career and to one of his job titles, uh, specifically from birth. Um, Benedict is this, Benedict's rather, is this, you know, powerful embedded force that was going to have some dramatic effect on his life. And it turns out to be the name he chose when he was elected pope. Um, but most of the action in his birth chart is going, is taking place at, um, at his ascendant. On his ascendant, we have asteroid Josephina, which is a feminine version of Joseph. We have asteroid Ratzinger, which is a, an exact match for his last name. We have asteroid, um, or we have Jupiter, which indicates the religious life. Um, we have asteroid Cardinal, which he was <laughs> before becoming Pope, and asteroid Papos, which oh is... My related to Pope as well, uh, you know, linguistically. And all, not all of these, but Jupiter, the Ascendant itself, and Josephina are also squared to asteroid Vaticana, which is named for Vatican Hill, where the Vatican is. So, again, major indications of that, of that pathway. Um, and when he passed on the 31st, um, we had Benedict's is again at station. Um, again, retrograde station. Um, and from 22 Virgo, it is exactly opposing Neptune, which has another connection with religion and spirituality, but also with, you know, dissolution and dissolving and, and sort of um, coming to the, the end of things. Um, we also had um, other indications that there was a major turn, turning point for him in having um, uh, asteroid Josepha, which is another feminine version of Joseph. There's no actual Joseph asteroid, unfortunately, but we have quite a few that are, that are approximating it. And Josepha was again at station, and it was opposing Saturn, which was the ancient lord of death, and asteroid Lachesis, who is named for Atropos' sister. She's the one who determines the span of life and then gives Atropos the, the high sign to, to, to cut that cord. Mm. And Damocles, which is the doom hanging overhead. Mm -hmm. And all of these together are forming a T-square with asteroid Requiem, which is named for the funeral mass for the dead on, on the day that he died. That's so, like pulling an arrow back and shooting it in a direction. Yeah. And the, direc yeah. the direction is the Requiem. Okay. Yep. yep. Wow. Once again, jaw drop. <laughs> well, one more. Now, he didn't pass during that particular period. He passed a few weeks later. Um, but um, still during the period, the effective period of the Jupiter and uh, Osiris opposition, but the sun had passed out of the T-square at this time. But that was David Crosby, who was another mm -hmm. internationally known uh, entertainer. Um, Crosby's, Crosby's got quite a chart. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, Neptune emphasis, as well as asteroids Erba and Grass, which are both metaphors, Herb and Grass, for one of his favorite pastimes, which was smoking marijuana, um, in the birth, and for which he ran into frequent trouble for his drug use, um, and one of the times he was actually arrested. Um, and that's no surprise when we find in his birth chart asteroid Neptune, uh, not asteroid Neptune, the planet Neptune, conjunct asteroid Darest, which is D apostrophe arrest, and asteroid Davida, which is a feminine form of David. So an arrest for drug possession use, whatever, for David is not unexpected when you see something like that in a chart. Um, he also attributed his, his uh, creative inspiration in songwriting to marijuana. He claimed that every song he wrote, he was stoned when he wrote it. Um, and that's reflected in a square, an exact square, actually, from asteroid Erba, which, again, is a, 
uh, form of herb, which is a marijuana euphemism, um, with two asteroids singer, an exact square. Um, the groups that he played with, he originally uh, uh, worked with the birds, and then the group uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. They're reflected strongly in the birth chart as well. Um, asteroid bird, B-Y-R-D, which is, I believe, how the, how the, the, the group's name yep, was spelled as well, right. uh, is one degree off the sun. And asteroids Nash and Still are conjunct each other within two degrees in square to the sun. So again, and they had a being, kind of contentious relationship, so that makes sense. Yeah, but also very self-defining in both roles, right? That's what the sun mm -hmm. is about, is defining yourself. So the two groups that really defined him were right tied up there with the sun in the birth chart. Now, I did mention that he'd been arrested once. That was in uh, Dallas, Texas, on April 13th of 1982. At the time, uh, there was an asteroid Crosby, and it's actually named for Bing Crosby, another singer, but not for this Crosby, but it, it works. Um, Crosby, at the time was um, square to Panacea, which is an asteroid that is named for the Greek goddess of medications and drugs of all types, legal and otherwise. And at the midpoint between them, semi-square to each, we have a conjunction of asteroid Dallas and asteroid, again, Durast. So there we're seeing the arrest of Crosby for drug use in Dallas, pretty plainly spelled out. Um, that is beautiful, and I'm going to interrupt you here for our final break. Hang on, everybody. You know we're going to talk about the person you want to know about in the final <laughs> segment, so stick around. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. How would you like navigational tools you can use on your own? Visit my site, empowermentunlimited.net, and click the Shop tab. There you'll find lots of talks and guides explaining the big influences at work now, like Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus in Taurus. You'll also find a variety of guided visualizations for relaxing, clearing your energy, or getting to know planetary archetypes. That address again, empowermentunlimited.net. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If you could find a way to get inside each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to Celestial Compass. We're talking with Alex Miller of Alex's Asteroid Astrology about all kinds of people and events in the news. And right before the break, you were detailing the incredible information in David Crosby's chart, tying him to both his music and drug use and arrest. Right. Um, let me just add a little bit about his actual death date, which was... Um the 18th of January. Uh, at the time, we had an exact conjunction of Davida, which again is that feminine form of David, with Pluto and the Sun, all three together uh, on that day. Uh, I'm sorry, Sun and Pluto were at the exact conjunction. Davida was a few degrees earlier in the sky, but 
within orb. And in, in exact sextile was asteroid Crosby to that Sun Pluto conjunction. Um, and this was still under the auspices, as I said, of the, uh, the Jupiter Osiris opposition, though the Sun had advanced sufficiently that it was no longer part of that pattern. And that's just pretty much it for David. Uh, now, yes, Mr. Trump. What else you got? Oh, all right. Donald Trump. Mr. Trump, let's make sure we get that in because I know everyone's waiting with bated breath. Um, so, yeah, you know, if you've been following the news, you're seeing, you know, more logs piled on the fire every day for the uh, witch burning that is <laughs> about to commence. For Mr. Trump, it seems, um, he's getting it from all sides these days. So I thought I'd take a look at something uh, that I don't ordinarily use. It's, it's a very valuable tool, but, you know, you don't have time for everything. And that would be progressions. Um, so we'll talk about the natal positions of these points, but also what's happening by progression, which is truly astounding. Um, so there are five, I would say, five leading players right now in the various cases that are uh, forthcoming with Mr. Trump. There is Letitia James, who is the New York State Attorney General. She has actually already filed civil charges uh, against the Trump Organization and Trump personally and has made criminal referrals to the Justice Department there. Um, Fonnie Willis, who is the Fulton County, Georgia DA, who is looking into Trump's uh, interference with the uh, 2020 election uh, count tabulation there, that's the famous call to the Georgia Secretary of State, Brad, Rapp Brad Rappensberger, where he requested that he find him, you know, such a number of votes to, to flip the results. Uh, Merrick Garland, who, of course, is the U.S. Attorney General and is overseeing um, several investigations, primarily into Trump's January 6th activities and also the, um, the treatment of sensitive and classified information that Trump absconded to Mar-a-Lago with after leaving the White House. Under him is Jack Smith, who is appointed special counsel to directly run those investigations, though Garland will make the final charging decisions. Um, and then finally, Alvin Bragg, who is the Manhattan DA, who is looking at criminal charges uh, similar to those along the lines that were filed uh, by uh, his New York uh, counterpart, uh, Letitia James. So... For Letitia, we have two close matches. There's an asteroid, Letitia. She doesn't spell hers. This is L-A-E. She doesn't spell her name with the A, just L-E. Um, and an asteroid, James. In the birth chart, Letitia at four Taurus is squaring natal Pluto uh, at 10 Leo, indicating that she has a, a transformative role potentially to play, um, having to do with you know power and um, Criminality is another area that Pluto rules. And currently, these are forming a T-square with Trump's progressed asteroid duress. So we're seeing there the charging already. Um, you know, where it goes is unclear, but and as a civil case, it wouldn't entail any jail time, but, you know, could be crippling to the organization and, and to Trump personally, financially. Uh, asteroid James, natally, is squaring... Uh, Mercury and in a T-square with Neptune, which again shows issues with fraudulent, that's the Neptune part, uh, documents, which is the Mercury part, and that's the underpinning of the cases she has against the organization and Trump. Now, by progression, Letitia has moved to zero Gemini from where it is conjunct both natal and progressed asteroid Trumper, which is our Celestial reference for Donald Trump, um, showing her as an opponent, um, but also squared to his progressed son, which again brings conflict and stress. So she's tapped in in, in in the current atmosphere, not the transit sky, but in the current atmosphere in Trump's psyche, she's very tapped in to, <coughs> excuse me, just one second. I'll just throw in while you're taking care of things that transiting Venus is going to enter Taurus later this month, and it's going to hit that four Taurus point you were talking about very yeah. soon. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> let me see. All right, so, so in, his, in his internal, you know, psyche, they're very much tapped into each other right now. 
she's on his mind, in other words. Um, mm-hmm. And then Fonnie Willis, um, there's an asteroid, Fanny, for Fanny. She spells her name F-A-N-I and spells it a little differently than the traditional F-A-N-N-Y. But um, it, they're, they're equivalent to each other. And there's an exact match for Willis. Natalie, asteroid Fanny, is conjunct his MC so she, uh, and squared the ascendant, so she has the power to affect his career and also how others see him. Um, and it's also squared to Mars, which again identifies her as an, impo- as an opponent or enemy of some sort. Um, and there's a loose grand cross, or, or I'm sorry, a loose T-square created with asteroid, natal asteroid Justitia, which is named for the Roman goddess of justice. So there's that definite connection there with, you know, bringing, um, bringing him to uh, account for, for misdeeds. Um, and it's also in an inconjunct, uh, an exact or a very tight inconjunct with astero- natal asteroid duress. So, again, a good potential there for bringing charges. Natal asteroid Willis is conjunct natal asteroid Dawn for Donald and mm-hmm. uh, Mercury. And again, uh, forming a T-square with natal Neptune and natal asteroid White House. So there we're seeing the conversation, the phone conversation, which is Mercury, by Trump, which is Dawn, um, in, as regards defrauding, which is Neptune, the election results in an effort to maintain his position as president, which is White House. Mm-hmm. And then Willis is, is tapped right into that. She's looking into that directly through asteroid Willis. By progression, uh, asteroid Fanny at 3 Gemini is conjunct Letitia, so the ladies are ganging up on him, <laughs> and is therefore also opposed to both natal and, and uh, progressed Trumper. And also squared the sun again, progressed sun. Um, Merrick Garland has just the one f- referent, but it is an exact match for Merrick. Natalie, that conjoins Pluto. So again, we're, he's, he's a transformative figure uh, with in Trump's life, particularly with the power to um, you know affect any criminal activity that's been going on. And it opposes asteroid Justitia. So there we're seeing the Justice Department connection, and again, that sense of bringing Trump to justice. Mm-hmm. Um, currently, uh, this this polarity is forming a T square with um, uh, the progressed placement of Durest and also the progressed placement of Nemesis, uh, which is uh, a point of ruin or undoing, or someone who uh, you know undercuts you or brings you down. That is conjunct to uh, the natal Merrick placement. So we're seeing an image there of him in that capacity. But what's very interesting is that by progression, Merrick is conjoining Trump's progressed son. So this natal potential is coming home to roost, so to speak. And Merrick is exactly opposing uh, progressed Damocles in his chart. Damocles is that threat or doom hanging overhead about to descend at any moment. Um, So, and again, tied with both natal and progressed Trumper. Um, Jack Smith, who's the special counsel under... Garland. It has, it's a very interesting asteroid here. It's, it's a compound name asteroid, what I call a compound name asteroid, which is first and last name strung together as one word, which is very common in the uh, in, for astronomers to, to name points that way for some reason. They can be separated and used for either first or last name in charts, but in this case we don't have to because the asteroid is Jack Schmidt, which, oh, is, wow. Perfect. which is the the, the German form of, of his uh, last name. It was Smith and Schmidt are you know, equivalent. Um, so at birth, these points, uh, um, yeah, the, the Jack Schmidt asteroid is conjunct Justitia. So again, he, it would make sense that he's the chief Justice Department investigator in the case now. But what's even more fascinating is that by transit, that conjunction has become exact. They were three degrees apart at birth, but they are now exact uh, together. Uh, and uh, and um, opposing uh, that natal Pluto, which, again, is criminality and and that effect. Um, And then uh, Alvin Bragg uh, is the Manhattan DA we spoke of. Natal Alvin conjoins the IC, which is giving it angular force and momentum, squaring the ascendant and Mars, which, again, uh, identifies him as an opponent and 
someone with the ability, ability to affect how others see him. And uh, I mentioned failed to mention also conjunct natal trumper. Um, progressed Alvin hasn't moved very far because it was it was about to change direction when Trump was born. So it went forward a little bit, and then it's moving backwards again. So it's pretty much where it was at birth, making the same aspects, except now it is also squaring progress for the progressed sun and forming a T-square with that progressed Damocles. Natal Bragg is part of that, that uh, whole Mercury-Neptune square in the birth chart at, uh, in, in, in Capricorn, so forming a T-square, a therefore, whereas progressed Bragg uh, is now conjoining the natal sun-moon polarity to conjunct the moon and opposing the sun, again, bringing a very strong personal connection. What's fascinating about this is if you look at step back from all these individuals and look at the big picture, right now in Trump's psyche, in his progressions, there is a grand cross formed by Trump's progressed son, conjunct progressed Merrick, opposing Damocles, which is these, all these threats hanging overhead. And the cross points are progressed Letitia for, for the New York DA, progressed Fannie for the Fulton County DA. At progressed Alvin for the Manhattan TA and progressed Trumper, which again ties it back personally to Trump. So and and the Grand Cross is being pulled in all these different directions. It's a you can run but you can't hide right. kind of feeling, right. like, and 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 being immobilized essentially, uh, yeah. or drawn and quartered if you prefer to use that kind of vicious right. language. <laughs> right. But the bottom, yeah. the upshot here certainly sounds like from everywhere you turn, we are in. A stretch of consequences and action. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what, what's making, what's exacerbating the situation now is that Trump is getting two eclipses on that natal duress this year and one eclipse on the progressed duress. So if something doesn't come down this year, then I guess he's off the hook again. But this is, the timing is all coming together from all angles and, uh, you know, we'll see what the upshot is. But, uh, Looking kind of grim from his perspective. I think it's time for me to look at what was going on in '94 when Saturn entered Pisces. So we'll uh, I, I'll follow up with that because uh, okay. there's some reckoning coming in here. Okay, so um, what what would you like to look at in our remaining time? Why don't we just take a quick look at a, a perspective? Uh, president. I don't know that I give her a lot of chance, but uh, from a practical level, but Nikki Haley is the only announced um, presidential candidate on the Republican side, other than Mr. Trump, of course. Um, so let's, uh, let's just take a quick look at her. Um, born January 20th, 1972. She's got two really strong polls to the office and to the Capitol. She has uh, asteroid Nikki uh, N-I-C-K-Y, not N-I-K-K-I, which is how she spells her name, but the same thing. She has asteroid Nikki exactly conjunct asteroid Washingtonia in the birth chart. So there's a really strong pull towards D.C. with that. She has an affinity for the capital. She also has the sun squared asteroid White House. So it's not just the capital in general. She'd really like to be at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue if she can. Um, she has... Uh, she has actually a, a very interesting um, history electorally vis-a-vis uh, -vis asteroids. She has a good um, she has a good placement uh, in in real time when she became uh, when she was elected South Carolina's governor for the first time on uh, two November in 2010. There was a um, a grand cross in the sky of the sun uh, opposing asteroid Carolina. Uh, and then on the cross points were asteroid Nico, which is N-I-K-K-O, similar to Nikki, N-I-K-K-I, and asteroid Halley, H-A-L-L-E, as opposed to H-A-L-E-Y. So you can see how she's tapped into, this, into, this, into the sun and in that grand cross for the day that she won that race. Um, when she made her announcement on Valentine's Day this year, asteroid Nikki that N-I-C-K-Y in the sky was at station, turned uh, retrograde the day before she made the announcement. So again, very powerfully embedded. Um, and it's conjunct Asteroid America, which is a powerful, 
you know, a powerful image of her willingness to, to, to guide the country. As America is also at station and turned direct three days before her announcement. Or, I'm sorry, turned retrograde three days before her announcement. At the same time, the, 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 the choosing of the moment was good. I'm, I'm basing this not on her physical speech, but on the, the uh, presentation, the release of the, um, the uh, internet, internet video that announced her candidacy the day before her actual speech. Um, and the timing on that gave us the moon at five Sagittarius conjunct the MC at six Sagittarius. So she's right up there as the focus of all eyes and in the area of governmental you know, uh, influence and also conjunct asteroid Nico again. And then um, in square to this, we have asteroid Nike, which is um, the, the name for the Greek goddess of victory, conjunct asteroid Halley for Halley's Comet, which is the same spelling with hers last name except an extra L, and asteroid Valentine. So this is sort of a nod to when wow. she made the choice to do that. And unfortunately, right here, I'm going to have to leave this hanging, and we'll have to visit this. at your The next time you come back, would you tell people how to find you, please? Sure. Um, the address is uh, it's asteroid, Alex's Asteroid Astrology. The address is www.alexasteroidastrology.com. <laughs> um, and uh, you'll find there, you can sign up for uh, email notification when new items are posted and you know we're posting very frequently because there's always stuff going on i'm going to be taking a look at the uh the verdict for the uh the alex uh, murdoch case from yesterday in the upcoming days so we'll see what that reveals um but i'm sure it'll be something juicy and you can also get information about asteroids in your own chart if you sign up so thank you so much you spent so much time on your research and i i really appreciate it well, I really enjoy, enjoy talking to you and uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to get the word out. Okay. Well, everyone, you'll remember to find me at empowermentunlimited.net and my um, forecasts are also at omtimes.com. Talk to you again soon. <laughs>